Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the contribution margin ratio. When we say ratio, it means a percentage. In the prior session, we looked at the contribution margin. How do we compute the contribution margin? In this session, we're going to be looking more at the contribution margin ratio and how do we use this ratio to make business decisions. So what is the contribution margin? Well, it's the selling price minus the variable cost. Simply put, if we have a product and we're selling a product for $10, it's costing us six dollars to buy the product six ten minus six will give us a contribution margin of four dollars per one unit now we can take this information and compute a percentage to figure out how much each unit we are selling is contributing to our margin to our contribution margin well to compute the contribution margin ratio which is a percentage we'll take the contribution margin which is four dollars as computed above divided by the sales sales is ten dollars we're only considering one unit and this gives us the contribution margin ratio of 40 percent so what did we do why did we do this well because for some companies, they might have sales of, for example, $100 sales and the contribu contribution margin is $40. And for some companies, they might have sales of $1 billion. Then how can we compare a company with the sales of $100? You know, don't read it literally. I'm, all what I'm trying to say is there's a difference in size and a company with sales of a billion. Well, we can take the company with sales in billions of dollars, figure out their contribution margin. OK, and let's assume their contribution margin is actually 300 million. If their contribution margin is 300 million and their sales is 1 billion, we would say that this company has a contribution margin of 30 percent. So notice, although the size of the companies, although I'm being extreme here, but extreme to make the point, this is company A, this is company B. If I'm comparing company A to company B, once I compute their contribution margin ratio, one is 40%, one is 30%, then I can compare them. Then they are both, we are basically factoring the size out and using percentages. So this is another way how we use the contribution margin ratio to make decisions. And this is, this is used in uh, when you conduct an audit, when you conduct financial statement analysis, you would use those contribution margin ratio. Now, this is the company that we are working with, Adam Electronics Retailer. Remember, Adam sells tablets and the price per tablet, the price per tablet is $500. And for this scenario, we are selling 400 tablets. 400 tablets times $50 is sales of 200,000. If you want to copy this information down, because we're going to be using the data from this example throughout this session, variable cost per one tablet is $300. So we're selling tablets. So the variable cost is 300 times 400 is 120,000. Our contribution margin, which is sales, notice sales less variable cost is 80,000. Then we deduct the fixed cost and we happen to have a net operating profit of zero but we can also compute the contribution margin for this company well how do we compute the contribution margin we can take 200 divided by 500 and this is the contribution margin per unit the contribution margin ratio same thing we can take the total contribution margin divided by total sales and it's also going to give us 40 percent so the contribution margin whether you use the price per unit or the total contribution margin divided by total sales, it's gonna give us the same percentage. Now also we could compute what's called the variable expense ratio. And the variable expense ratio is taken variable expenses per unit divided by sales per unit or total variable expenses divided by total sales. Sometime you might be giving the, the individual price sometimes you might be giving the total you can go back and forth and we'll see in an example later how we can go back and forth uh, between those two ratios now what does that mean what does it mean that we have a 40 percent contribution margin ratio it means each dollar in sales each dollar in sales that we can generate each increase result in total contribution margin of 40 cents so every time we sell for one dollar we can add to our contribution margin 40 cent now, if we sell $100, we can add 
forty dollars so on and so forth now how can we use the now this information to make prediction to do what if analysis well before we proceed uh, most likely you are looking for some help you are looking to learn about the contribution margin you are either a student or a cpa candidate or a cma candidate either or check out my website farhatlectures.com i can help you with your accounting courses your cpa preparation C cma preparation i have lectures multiple choice true false that's going to help you learn the material this is a partial list of all my accounting courses my cpa resources are aligned with your backer roger gleam wiley so it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your cpa review course i also give you access to pre to previously released ai cpa questions with detailed solutions Solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. If you're watching, it means it's helping you. Like, please like it. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And I do have a GroupMe account for Facebook on, uh, on GroupMe for CPA candidate. So how can we use the contribution margin ratio? Well, we can use it to predict what would our profit be if things changes. Okay. What if tablet sales increase from 400 to 500 remember in the original example we sold 400 tablets so it's an increase of 100 dollars well we sell each tablet for 500 dollars so that's an increase in sales of 50 thousand dollar now knowing what we know we have a contribution margin ratio of 40 percent well guess what if we increase sales by 50,000, it means we should increase our contribution margin by 20,000. And this should flow to the bottom line because in the example that we worked, remember in the example that we worked, we already covered the fixed expense. So let's prove this. Let's show you this in a contribution margin format. Well, total sales now is 250,000 because we increased tablets by 100 tablets. Again, 100 times 50 will give us, give us an additional fifty thousand dollar in sales from the sales we deduct the contribution margin which is five hundred tablets times three hundred dollars that's is the variable cost sales minus variable expenses or variable cost will give us a contribution margin of a hundred minus eighty will give us a profit of twenty thousand which is an increase in profit from zero to twenty thousand and it's basically what we predicted even before we went through this computation we could also use the contribution margin ratio using what's called an equation and basically what is an equation and this is where you need to be very familiar with the contribution margin ratio income statement because the equation is der derived from that what is the contribution margin income statement let's take a look at it one more time it's sales minus variable cost equal to contribution margin minus fixed cost equal to your net profit profit or net operating income so we can express profit too if we can take profit profit should equal to you could use the contribution margin ratio for our purposes is 40 percent multiplied by sales that's going to be our contribution margin then we can deduct the fixed ex fixed expenses so it's basically in a sense it's a shortcut but it's derived from the contribution margin income statement so we are not doing anything that you should not be familiar with except we are expressing this information differently or Another way to compute profit is to take the unit contribution margin, which is $200 per unit. This is this is dollar amount unit contribution margin versus the unit the unit ratio, the contribution margin ratio. Multiply by quantity. Quantity is how many units we are going to sell. Then we can deduct the fixed cost. Now let's take a look at an example. What do we expect profit to be if sales is 600 tablets? the selling price is 500 and 300 variable cost basically the same data well let's use the contribution margin ratio of 40 percent remember for this example three 200 divided by 500 is 40 percent our contribution margin is 40 percent so here what we do we'll take 40 percent times sales that's going to give us 120,000 minus fixed cost will give us 40,000 of profit or we can use the contribution margin per unit which is two hundred dollars times the quantity we're selling six hundred that's going to give us one hundred and twenty thousand minus fixed cost of eighty thousand will give us a profit of forty thousand so make sure you are familiar with this formula because you will need to use it you will need to use it 
So let's take a look at this exercise, which can be found at farhatlectures.com. And this is what you need to do. After you learn the concept, you really want to go to Farhat Lectures and practice exercises like this one, practice multiple choice. Zinc Talk company manufactures and sells a single product has provided the following data concerning its most recent month of operation. Sales, 6,300 unit. At total sales of 415,800, variable cost of 289,800. Contribution margin is 126,000. Fixed cost, 98,500. And the net operating income based on the scenario is 27,500. Simply put what they're giving us here. And if you're giving this on the exam, that's great. This is the contribution margin formula or ratio or, or, or income statement, which will be very, very easy for you once you know how this is all structured. So sales minus variable cost equal to the contribution margin minus fixed cost equal to net operating income. They're asking you what happened if sales is 6,100 unit? What will be the net contribution margin actually immediately you should be able to eliminate two choices it cannot be 27,500 it cannot be 122 because it has to be less than 27,500 it's either B or D so if you're guessing you just have to guess and you're better off with 50% chance well you don't have to guess we're gonna go ahead and work this problem well for one thing, I can find the contribution margin ratio immediately by taking 126, 126,000 divided by 415,800, and it's going to be 0 0.303030 0 0 0 0 rounding. Okay, it's not it's not a good uh, ratio to illustrate, but all what I did is I take 126 contribution margin divided by sales. So this is the contribution margin ratio. I don't know my selling price per unit, but can I find my selling price per unit? Sure, I can. If my total sales Sales is 418, 415,800. For 6,300 unit, I can take the total sales divided by the number of units I sold. And by doing so, I will find my selling price per one unit, which happens to be, divide this by 6,300, is $66. Also, I can do the same thing for my variable cost per unit because it varies in proportion to sales. So my variable cost total is 289,800 divided by 6,300 unit. And this is going to give me my contribution margin for one unit. And that's $46. Now, if I take sales minus variable cost, easy $20. If I take $20 divided by 66, it's going to give me back to this ratio 0.3 point 0 0.303030 forever, which is not going to be good when if we do the contribution margin, it's going to round, but we don't have to use the contribution margin. We would use the contribution margin per unit. Now the question is, back to the question, what's my operating operating income? Well, if I'm selling 6,100 unit and my contribution margin per unit is $20, if I take 6,100 times $20, that's going to give me that's going to give me 6,100 times $20. That's going to give me a total contribution margin of 122. I multiplied by the contribution margin because I know that it's $20 right here. Now, from the contribution margin, all what I have to do, deduct my fixed expense, and that's going to be 98,500. That's going to give me 23,500. Now, if I use the other formula, which is the percentage, first I have to find sales. It's 6,100 times sales is selling price per unit is 66. So if I take 6,100 unit, 6,100 times $66, that's going to give me total sales of 402,600. Now you have to multiply by 0 0.303030 repeating because this is going to be a rounding issue. I did this and it's going to be, uh, if I do it, for, you know, for several one, it's going to be, it's going to give me, if I do 0 0.303030, 0 0 okay, it's going to give me contribution margin again of 122. So I'm using the percentage. Again, if I deduct 98,500, it's going to give me 23,500, the same answer. So this problem can be found with detailed this problem and other problems for that matter can be sound on can be found on farhatlectures.com and this is where my farhatlectures.com can help you learn in addition to your to the lectures so take advantage of the subscribe invest in yourself the cpa exam is worth it your accounting education is worth it stay safe and good luck